So thank you very much. So first of all, hello. So when someone talks about interacting with WordPress, they are typically talking about the front of the site, the elements. We might think of it as the post editor, but often it's the site itself. And this has evolved. And in this talk, I'm going to go through what are those elements. How did we get here? And maybe where are we going? And how do we create things? And I'm going to look at some possible future considerations and have some hopes at the end. And these are going to be for some very personal hopes as well. A lot of this talk is going to focus on themes and extensibility due to these elements being from themselves. And at the end, I'm going to share a link with some resources that I'm hoping to grow uh, and encourage checking them out. So the WordPress way is something said a lot. And it's something said often with a positive mindset, often accepting that something just works because it always has in WordPress. And we say it's a great path to follow. And this has been the case for many things over the phases of the editing experience, from easier editing to customization that has been eased, but not taken advantage of, because it's been presumed that things maybe worked a particular way, because that was the WordPress way that things worked. Processes are also built to work around the WordPress way, to accommodate those edges and hitches. And when you think everything is always going to be the hard path, you are constantly braced. And this can have an interesting mind flip when something is actually easier. You don't trust it. You find it a little bit suspicious that something could be that easy. But it turns out it actually can be. So changing a theme should be as simple as changing clothes. And you should be able to slip in and out of them, not losing any content or any great changes. And this is quite a generalization, but it has the reality for so long has actually been, it's more like changing clothes and kind of removing your head rather than doing anything else. So add to this that themes and often plugins have been in a race to the bottom with options. You can call it a framework, a builder, you can call it whatever you want, but even the lightest of intent was burdened by having to support 101 options. All of these with varying interfaces uh, to those that interacting had to learn countless color pickers, endless background settings, uh, the list of interfaces, they stacked up to dizzying combinations and heights. And plugins often have key interactions like styling, for example, primary buttons, be different from the rest of the experience because they don't know and then it breaks it so someone doesn't know what they're doing at all. So far, the elements I'm going to kind of talk about are uh, kind of simple, but there's a hidden design system as well. And what does that really mean? Well, all too often, when creating with WordPress, what can or can't be extended and the opportunities are often isn't known. This makes the seed and ever-flourishing WordPress design system itself feel to many hidden. The system makes the blocks makes the interface, everything you see in the editors and beyond, that is, the system. There is a design system in WordPress. It just feels more hidden than sometimes it should be. This isn't a design system talk, though. That's, it would have a really different title. But due to that close nature and the fact that the elements use this, I'm also including that point. So in the past, it kind of felt simpler, but that was because it was a known path that we were on. You'd have a theme. You'd add plugins to that theme and likely some custom code as you needed it. Custom CSS was a normality and to many experiences. Snippets were shared far and wide that you'd grab and then you'd put them in or you'd have your kind of repo of snippets that you'd always use on every site. Themes, however, got larger and larger and larger with the boundaries around the plugin and the theme blurring. Plugins were also getting more and more complicated. Pulling in libraries and grabbing in frameworks to accommodate and stack up on these interfaces. The product stack has become unwieldy for many experiences. And phase one of the work that's been done recently saw the foundations laid so the elements could take advantage. It wasn't really until the customization phase where this flourished though. A system was forming and the language around was growing component by component. It's also worth saying that with projects like this, uh, there's a term for iceberg projects, which is what you see is not maybe what you're kind of experiencing. There's a lot of this foundation work 
and he's doing first. And that led to a vast amount of work that needed to be done, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but it's not always visible, going back to that hidden. So there today feels like a new energy around creation, and I don't think it's just me that feels this. That's great, but I've got this far without me kind of explaining what are the elements, and I want to do that. What are those elements, and how do you even start to create them? If site editing is a sliding scale, where do you work? And how do you do that, depending on what you're creating for? And how can you start taking advantage of these? So I'm going to take a look at each of these elements, and they are blocks, patterns, template parts, templates, and styles, and how they all add up to create a site. So blocks are often what we focus on. Maybe wrongly or too much, and I'm kind of going to explore that a little bit. A block is the smallest amount, as it's kind of that it says here, it's that abstract term to describe units of markup. Quite a statement, that. Uh, when added together, though, they form the content, the layout of the page. They are often what we think of, after all, um, it's uh, everything is a block, is said frequently, so they're what we think of. So block literally make the block editor, uh, not just by name. They are foundational. Design tools are block-based and focus on interfaces that hook into specific blocks, powering them to combine styling. Blocks are powerful, but they are the foundational element, and they are where it starts, not where it ends. Patterns are often what people get and understand. So if you close your eyes or, or if someone else does and you start to think of a site, you're not seen in blocks. <laughs> you're generally seen in patterns. That's why patterns are so powerful. These are a collection of blocks, often arranged together with intention, because um, you have to actually put them together, and often opinionated through styling attached to them. Patterns have unlocked and empowered so many people. Um, again, it's what we understand when we see sites. The pattern directory has brought some incredible visual freedom and opportunities. It has also brought a range of options to those creating themes and experiences to extend and include. You can even make art, and there's a museum of block art using design tools, so you can even kind of start to explore and create. They are portable, they are stylable, and they even now come with syncing. It's kind of a great marketing sign, but they do. Patterns are a pivotal element, but that's just one of them. A template part is a smaller section of content that can be included uh, often across a site, but in one or more templates. And I will add that to more common use cases are more than one for this. So when you think of a template part, uh, often you'll think of a header or footer, but you can think of more things like this, like post meta, or you can also think of a sidebar as well. Template parts are also within the site editor. They zoom in. That's a really great feature because you kind of go with into it as well, uh, which is a really great experience to know as you're working on. So templates. Uh, often considered to be the top level, uh, if you see styling as the wrapper around it. Templates are often, in this quote, considered to be one of the most important aspects of themes. I'll let everyone debate that. Uh, they are the files where everything comes together, and we all know about the template hierarchy, after all. They are tried, tested, and known. So templates now have a new lease of life, and be able to create more easily than ever in the site editor. Along with that, unique ones can be spun up and exported into your theme. And styling, well, that's this really, really simple word. But in simple terms, it connects something like the theme JSON, or your, I often think of it as the recipe file of your site. Uh, it unlocks styling opportunities. Previously, you had to know code to achieve. And if, this, if that kind of styling recipe then creates these interfaces and says, I'm going to use this bit and I'm going to use this bit. So there now are styling variations that mean a lot of the time you might, have what you might have thought you need something like a child theme. You now don't, because you can just do styling changes. And design tools provide consistent, unified interfaces for a range of styling functionality. And it opens up a kind of a whole world of potential combinations for many more. So that's the elements. How do you actually use them? I'm going to take a look at that. Um, um, take a look at what's possible within current WordPress. And it might be a product or it might be a theme that you want to ship that adapts to any use case. Um, 
So I'm going to look at two particular things. I'm going to look at with and for. So with is any possible current WordPress feature being able to be used. Uh, it might be a product, it might be a theme that you want to ship that adapts to any of those use cases. It works with all the features on. So for is going to be crafted to suit a job, a particular state. This might, of course, be a plugin or a site. I'm going to kind of explain that a little bit as I dig into those. So. If we're looking at this, we're, we're, when we're creating for everything on or for as many features as possible, you are not typically aware of the boundaries or the setup that the site's going to work on. Anything could happen. <laughs> Any site, this could be put on. Typically, you would be using as much native around the site editor. The same goes with the block editor. It's worth noting the distinction between the two editors that I'm using here, because I think there's two distinct experiences as you go between them currently. Templates, you'd have all the defaults and often a front. Template parts, you'd probably set up a range of those, including header, footer, and often meta as well. Style variations, often these are going to be used, and all core blocks are going to be styled. And typically, there would be quite a few as well uh, for patterns. Custom blocks probably aren't going to be used if you're doing this. Uh, but you probably, potentially, you could support optional external blocks when you do this. Creating with is creating general and widely using as many features. Looking at default themes is a really good example if you're trying to learn how to do this, for example. This is very much as everything on as possible, with the unknown implementation of what you are creating, with the editor as the system. For any plugins or blocks that you are creating with, uh, they're actually going to have minimal styling when you do this as well. So, for depends on the product or if implementing. For example, if a site or a client, or depending on the scale, it would be different to creating a custom product or for a single use. You typically start with the design system when you're doing this. If you're creating a simple site focusing on a simple job to be done, this is pretty easy. It's a pretty simple task that you have. But that starts to get more complicated as you scale, and you start to really have to focus on the task paths that are going to be used. Templates and template parts and patterns are very much going to be use case based. What are the jobs to be done? What are people trying to do? And what do you need in this case? Styles is typically going to be the branding provided by the client. You might use a style book uh, to be used to display it. Custom blocks probably are going to be used in this case. If you're an agency, maybe you have a bank of those that you're going to use in a companion plugin, for example. The editor, or specific, specifically often the site editor, is as much as part of this custom experience. Uh, you're going to be looking to scale depending on that extent and go beyond. So this is going to be quite a custom experience when you're doing this. And there is still a range of options for themes. Let's kind of not forget about themes. When considering what to pick, all are valid depending on what you want. Framework, page builder, classic, block, all have a place depending on your workflow. And that's, again, looking at all your options and deciding what you want to use for your needs and for the needs of what you're creating. Often for those interacting with themes, the most effective are those that get the job done. And that's a really important thing to think about. This idea that you can just go to one place and just be able to do everything with everything, that is actually flawed if you actually ever see someone try and do everything with everything. Themes, however, are today being allowed for the most part to get back to actually what they're curiously good at, which is being themes. They're actually really good at focusing on styling, not trying to be a plugin. There's a strength in themes when they do that, a weakness when they try to do everything. If you create using the site editor, a site, um, lay down a foundation perhaps, uh, maybe using a the theme JSON or the create block uh, plugin, a create block theme plugin, I apologize, it can truly feel like using Dreamweaver. Realize I'm dating myself a little bit with that term, but that's OK. This is an incredible uh, way to work, and I would encourage anyone to try to do it. Uh, you're working straight with the real things, and it's actually quite freeing. Um, you get to use the elements to create with, and it's really work as you're sketching and creating tool. 
In this flow, you would export at the end of it, so you would kind of use it as a prototype and sketch. And I do this quite a lot, and this is how I create my themes when I'm working with them and I'm trying to prototype. I find I use this way more than any design tool now, and it's really effective. So there is a misconception that everything should be a block when creating, or everything should be a block in general. As mentioned before, when people think of a site, they're often thinking of a pattern, not of a block. The same goes for creating. Often, it actually just needs to be a pattern. It doesn't need to be a new block either. It's actually probably already a block that exists. There are missing blocks, though, and there is a project in course to, and the idea is to have repeated blocks that can be supported, and that's going to be amazing because if you think, um, the example I always go back to is the accordion block of how many different agencies probably have their own accordion block and how many different freelancers have their own accordion block. If they could have one accordion block they could use, that's quite a sentence, um, it would be amazing for them to be able to come back and, and even have variations. But even some of the suggested blocks for that, some of them are patterns, they're not blocks as well. So being able to consider whether something actually and, and critically looks should be a block or not is really important. Some themes are going to need functionality, and that's where considering letting the theme get back to just being a theme and putting the functionality in a plugin comes in mind. Companion plugins are a really awesome thing. Unfortunately, we're in a place where a lot of plugins uh, are really hooked into those themes. And classic themes have, have kind of made us into that habit of doing that. Themes and plugins do serve distinct purposes. And the hitches and the problems come when they get twisted and merged into each other. Creating is great using just the elements, but what is even more incredible is going beyond extending those elements and pushing what can be done. This is where you start to make decisions on how far to go and what to adapt, and not even to adapt, based on knowing the system. So I already shared about the design system, the components and the styling, and the interface patterns in WordPress. So knowing these allows you to choose what you can bring in or what you don't want to. One aspect of this related to themes are design tools. They're in simple terms the interface to theme JSON. They allow unified tools for spacing, colors, and much, much more. This is not only incredible empowerment for those creating those interfaces, but it allows those that make themes be able to rely on those as well. You can depend on them, you can reuse them, and know that they are getting refined and improved in core as well. Once you know what can be done with the design system and can be extended, then you can choose what not to use or what to use. Really, it's about knowing those boundaries and then utilizing them in your system. And don't presume that it's not available. Uh, it just kind of, it might be being worked on as well. It's about that kind of knowledge as well. Know the elements, know when you can use them in your site. And this works both for kind of information. If you find that there's something that you might want, raise that information to the people that are creating it because that might be able to put it on the roadmap as well, which is really useful. The scales as the complexity of what has been built happens, though. For example, enterprise sites. But it also applies to someone wanting to create a product. Knowing what can or can't be extended in the experience is vital. As far as core goes, being able to iterate and extend and have that extensibility and improve based on that feedback is key. As I said, if knowing something isn't known, then it's not going to be, it might get overlooked. So there actually is on GitHub um, kind of some project boards and a tag for extensibility issues. And things like that are really important to know what people are creating and know what the barriers that they're hitting and know how that they are creating with. In order to do that, people need to start creating with them. So it's this kind of cycle as well. Often it's hard to see the importance of the foundational features, like things like the interactivity API. But these provide the grounding to be built upon. Remember I said about the iceberg? You sometimes don't know the importance of the things that are foundational. A good example is Mega Menus. The example that it recently showed how important all this work is to be able to achieve things like that. These are the stress cases. I call them stress because they, they cause people stress when you don't have them rather than use cases <laughs> um, that enable more people to be able to use block themes, more people to be able to use these things. 
It's easy to focus just on the visual front thing when creating a site. I would encourage thinking of the entire experience. What do the styles look like? What flows are the editors going to use? And the different experiences might you need for different roles? What patterns are even going to be visible or not? If you are making blocks, think of placeholders and primary and secondary and placing of options. Don't all just put it in the sidebar. You can also think to craft the experience that the job needs to be done also. One WordPress doesn't suit all, and it really shouldn't. Extension and adapting of the experience can and should be done by those working with the elements. It's also something to consider in anything that you create, not just set and forget. So, I've looked at the elements, the now, but what about the future? How do you take everything about that and beyond, and what does even that mean, and what are my hopes? So, it's already started with the maturing of concepts. Probably one of the foundation things that's happened and benefited so far is this. This has helped and continues to make things clear. It helps us implementing, uh, but it also builds trust. If you can understand something, you can trust it. Initiatives like the WordPress developer blog have helped along with hallway hangouts and triage focuses because they've helped with understanding and clarity and define things. Actually, having a definition for something was really, really useful. And using the same word for something is also really useful, defining terms. That said, it's a path to maturity, not one that is complete. If anything, it's a path that underneath, again, it's not always visibly seen. Initiatives around accessibility and interactivity, uh, all these improvements give more to literally extend and build with. They also provide a lot of the missing pieces previously that had to be worked around that WordPress way. There's a lot, of course, around those gaps in the classic or older bases, but that comes from conversations, from saying what you're building, what the hitches are, and then surfacing those hitches, because they might not be aware. The work going on beyond just the editing experience is important. This takes all the learnings and thinkings of the system into more areas. It literally gives more Lego pieces to play with, which is so amazing. It also brings iterations and improvements to the pieces that maybe felt that they were um, needing kind of that extra iteration. You can go back to them as well. It also provides the opportunity to explore, to know, to give feedback and understand how maybe this component needs to uh, adapt and have these kind of improvements brought to it. Having unified primary buttons makes sense for someone who uses the admin of interface of WordPress, but giving that information and knowing that and then being able to take that if you use headless and not using it, again, Maybe it's not so important for you, but you want to be able to detach those styling. So giving that information and being able to use those components in the way that you can use them is really important as well. So knowing when a component needs to be, able to be free of styling or when styling can be attached to it is also really important. Learning about those flows and also from a creator's perspective, learning when you can use native components, when you shouldn't use native components, all of this and the Lego pieces. It also is benefit from existing patterns, and you can request that maybe these patterns you use repeatedly, and could these be in core as well? So this is where I'm going to start to dream a little bit of a future and hold a big invisible sign above my head saying, thoughts my own. Blocks are amazing, and projects to create more core-supported blocks are incredible because they will help unify blocks and create things over and over again, like my example of accordion. Uh, but it's, it's a really important one that I've seen so many created of. However, there are features that need to mature for those that are creating sites and themes, and those who are working with the elements currently. Finding some path for older things from things like short codes to many is really, really important. It's just a start. And what that path is probably isn't clear, and we need to have conversations about what that is as well. My hope is for things like pattern variations and other things to be explored and for us to start having conversations about what could be. Sharing the styles you create is also something that people are wanting to do. There's a need for that and looking at how people could be able to be doing that within the interface as well. The more we have defaults for things in theme JSON, the better the theme starts are always going to be for those that are creating themes as well. And we have a, a lot of that already, so we have that boost before you start. 
So I have many hopes, which is probably not a surprise, but I want to start with a hope for growing the elements in the WordPress system. When there is a kit and there's boundaries and styles defined in core, or in a theme for implementing the elements, this benefits the end experience. Core can offer solid defaults, custom experiences uh, that always be needed, and there can be creativity can flourish. The less considerations you have around which color picker to choose or which range control to use or to implement, actually the more creative freedom you have. It's known when you learn art that the more boundaries you set up, <laughs> actually the better art you can create. And that's actually a lesson that we really need to learn. Trust can be built and grown with an experience it, when an experience is dependable and a primary action is the same throughout, so someone can know what they're doing. This is when you're using the system effectively. It also means the standard of things like accessibility and usability can raise up because we can have that quality control over them. Disparate interfaces are hard to learn, hard to know, and can you really trust that snippet that you got from a random site? Possibly you can't. It takes a lot to trust an end user fully. So some thinking has to be done how much you open the experience, and that relies on the job to be done, and that's a challenge to many in this space. Set up those safe boundaries and allow some play, because safe playing in styling really is empowering to end users. Um, if you actually think there's a game, uh, quite an old game now, the, one of the original Tomb Raider games, and the start of the onboarding of that is you literally end up starting to you learn by playing. And it's a really great example of onboarding. So if you think about taking that into your experiences, and it's how humans naturally learn. Allow that safe playing, allow that learning through doing. When I look back over the past few years, and I see how those elements have come, how much possibilities are now is exciting, it's thrilling even. It's also not done yet, and we've reached a great point of documentation and solidifying of concepts. It's a great time to dive in, and it's a great time to explore those elements yourself. A cautious hope is a hope for more opinionated experiences, for less options at the start, but that experiences, and themes to really focus on jobs to be done, and not think that all the jobs had to be done all the time, and not showing everything by default, because honestly, that just overwhelms. There's countless psychology experiments that prove that. My hope is, as you get to explore, that you're going to share those insights, because that's, that's what we do in the community really well. We share those insights, and we explore, and we experiment. We blog it. We add a pattern to the directory, or the museum of block art. We push what can be done, and report that bug. We engage in feedback, in discussion. Each exploration and question, each conversation in the hallway track, leads us to more understanding and conversations, to better tools, to push those elements and grow those elements together to more Lego pieces and more adaptable pieces and elements for us to play with. So to that point, thank you. And this is my link. If I ha I'm hoping to grow this collection of links as well. And I'd love to continue any discussions that I might have sparked with anyone. So please come and talk to me. Thank you. So. Wonderful session, uh, Tammy. On that note, let the, let the discussions begin. Now we have a few minutes for Q&A. 5.45, we have to be out of here. So before that, let's ask as many questions to Tammy. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I um, find it very interesting. and. Uh, very great to explore like the element of WordPress. Um, I actually have one question regarding of my current work. Actually, I'm working on maintenance uh, WordPress website, which has been built for like in 2013, I would say. So it has been going through transition that um, currently WordPress has moved into blog and things, but we're like stuck in the in in the past. So um, I was I was wondering like um, how we can like. Um, manage and think about what should be a way to go like to a modern way because we know that the website that we're gonna maintain gonna go further into yeah. more years and if we still keep using the old technology that would I would say that it it won't be very long lasting. So um, 
I'm very interested in the point that you say that we, we need to consider which, which uh, path we got to go for, like whether we should using the element, using the default one, or other options. So how, how, how would be the good start um, to, to see where we should um, go into like making a website that is built a long time ago into a modern version? Yeah. So that's a big question. Thank you. Um, first of all, planning. <laughs> Because just to take... Is it a site or a theme that you have set? But it's a whole site that you have. Um, we actually build a custom theme based, okay. like it, it like a child themes actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have a classic whole, uh, a system. Mm -hmm. um, is it a network as well? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, so to take your whole network and just be like YOLO, gonna convert it. That's a lot. So you need a plan. <laughs> um, first of all, plan. Um, first of all, decide. How much are you going to do of side editing if you're not going to do side editing? Um, are you going to use? So the minimum I would say is look at are your child themes, do they need to be child themes? Could they just be style variations? Mm -hmm. If they are just doing styling, then you could bring them back to be style variations. Uh, that's one example. But again, it's planning. And first of all, that comes with who in your group has that education. So first of all, just start by making a block theme. <laughs> start by learning and, and knowing how those pieces work. Look at the default theme as well, because if you just jump straight in, it's going to be a lot for you to just jump straight in. So look at 2024. I love that theme because it's such a good thing to learn from and learn how those pieces go together and then think how you're going to do it. Um, for your case, you're probably talking about a minimal <laughs> um, conversion over. There's a lot. We could be like about an hour going through a roadmap, um, but a companion plugin probably because you probably got a lot in your functions.php files. You probably got several in your functions.php of your child files, all of those kind of things. So you need to look at companion plugins and taking that functionality out of your themes as well and just looking at that kind of balance. There's a lot. <laughs> There's no small yeah. answer to you. Yeah. <laughs> But everything is possible for you to do, and I would encourage you to start slow. Theme JSON is a good place for you to start because you're just taking the styling out and just thinking about like what are your colors, what are your fonts, what are your little pieces that you want. You don't have to have everyone in the editor moving everything around or if you don't want that for your editors. You, you can turn on what you want and what you don't want as well. Thank you so much. Going back to your fantastic metaphor about how the constraints of what WordPress has become and the block editor can breed creativity and um, sort of thinking about the way that, at least personally, in my opinion, Gutenberg does do a good job of gradually and carefully introducing new features so that mm -hmm. we can test them before mm -hmm. they become defaults in WordPress. Are there any pieces of this toolkit that WordPress has become that you do think have, that continue to stifle creativity in some way or that we still need to rethink? So the big one I think is we need more defaults currently in the theme JSON. Um, defaults in theme JSON, I would love more, the thing that I hear constantly is the worry of like opening things up in the editor. Um, And how do we control that? How do we lock that down? So, so easier control of flows in the editor, um, role-based controls as well, like more and more and more. I'm hearing that. Like we got locking, yay! <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> pattern by pattern locking is very like it's it's a weird. I'm visual, so I just see a, a door with like masses of locks. <laughs> That's all you can think of, um, and that doesn't really work when you're saying to someone to do it. And there's so many like little back doors that you could easily like fall chip into. Uh, I don't know. I found that there was just one that you could just trip into even if you thought you had it locked off. And it's, it may be a bug to do that, but user controls, more defaults. The tools like create block theme plugin, I always forget the theme bit in that, are amazing. But if those have defaults, I think that you spin up and you can say like types, that would help. There is still this feeling that a theme has to do everything still, and it can't be ephemeral. And I think if we get back to the fact that themes can just be 
very light and just change and almost that themes are the style variations, which is quite radical <laughs> kind of thinking, that's okay because there's so much in patterns and template parts that yes, we're pa the theme is the package. That's like the thing that we're just putting it in the box and sending it off if we're moving it around. But we add a lot of weight to it. So there's a lot of words, but the, the locking and, and the, the flows is, is a big one. Starbuck as well, uh, so that needs some work, I think, as well, for people, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have one question about uh, elements. It is, uh, you see, the foundation is built by block, right? So can I use this concept to uh, extend, for example, a lot of multimedia, for example, uh, movies or MP3 from different blocks, and user can have the slider or effect to change? So you could have a block for that? Yeah. Is that the question you're asking? 100% you can have a block for that. Um, so one of the elements is a block. Yes, but you could also have that within, so you could have a slider within a pattern if you wanted as well. So yeah, I want to achieve that kind of design. I have to uh, combine with another plugin or I have to develop my own, maybe JavaScript. I mean, there are this. countless slider plugins, so I wouldn't reinvent the wheel there. Oh, okay. And there are countless slider blocks as well. So you actually raised a really good question. Always search first before reinventing it. So I see time and time again, people are like making a new block or making you um, this or making you that. There are so many good plugins and blocks out there. Find them, first of all, like on theme directory, then, uh, <laughs> sorry, the plugin directory. Have a look and search because they might be there for you and they're right in your dashboard that you can search for. And there might be the ideal one for you there. Yeah. And also have a look, um, depending on your theme that you're using, and also have a look, um, uh, depending if you wanted just a pattern and you didn't want... Uh, so there are default blocks. You're talking about MP3. There are default media blocks that you would be able to use as well. You kind of went into slider. I don't know what functionality you want, because that could be quite a lot. Um, but for default, you also have like media blocks that are default as well in there, in your system. I don't know if I helped you. <laughs> I hope I helped uh, you. Uh, if uh, I did not help you, find me after. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm sure many of you have a uh, few more questions for Tammy. Find her in the hallways today, tomorrow onwards. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Mainly, I think for 5.45, uh, everybody goes out. So, Tammy, thank you very much. That was a fantastic session. But it was a very technical talk, but it, uh, there's a lot for non-technical folks to take away from that. And uh, it was really, you ex explained the whole concept of elements, the blocks and the patterns and the templates and, and uh, how does the styling step in and where to uh, put the boundaries and how does that influence the customer experience and give the creative freedom to the developers, the designers, other things. Thank you very much. Wonderful talk and we have a small gift Thank for you. you. Thank you.